my name is Rodrigo and I will present here some uh, works which I've been conducting both here at Fugir and at the University of Bahia and South Africa. So the outline of this presentation is divided in background, which will be described uh, very briefly because a lot of colleagues here already introduced a lot of probiotic stuff. So I'll be skipping a lot of spark. Next, uh, I will present our collaboration network. Uh, the results will be divided in the studies we have achieved with the uh, uh, Federal University of Bahia team and the USBJ and EHI uh, team. And at last, I will present uh, our take home answers. Uh, so, this is uh, our collaboration. Basically, we have the Brazilian team, which is divided in the Federal University of Bahia, in which uh, I occupy the position of a visiting professor, and together with my uh, master's student and undergrad students, Larissa and Larissa, which are twin sisters. And we have also the WebMG team, which is composed by Professor Vasco, which is a full professor here at the uh, uh, FGCM, and Professor Flavio, which is an adjunct professor here at the veterinary school. And I myself is a member of the WebMG team also, because uh, Vasco had a crazy idea of he told me to do a second PhD in bioinformatics. So here I am again. And we also have uh, other postdocs and students working with uh, probiogenomics subject, which is uh, the Luis Lima and uh, the student Lucas Jorge. And we collaborate with the, the, the French team, which is composed by Dr. Edouard which is the head of the IHA Institute uh, from Han, and Dr. Philippe Langela, which is, is the head of the Institute Michalis in uh, IHA. And our colleagues, which are both uh, researchers, Dr. Eric Quedon and Dr. Wenayo Jian. And from, they're both also from the uh, Han. And uh, our colleagues, from uh, Jui and Jusas, uh, Dr. Jean-Marc Chatel, and the postdoc uh, student, Marcus. So, uh, probiotics are live microorganisms which can administer inadequate animals. They confer uh, health benefits on the host. So basically, we have first generation probiotics, which are mainly uh, that as a bacteria, which is a group of bacteria which convert glucose into lactate. And they have been used for food preservation 2,000 years before Christ. So we have been using probiotic empirically. Uh, thousands of years. So although most uh, old generation probiotics are isolated from fermented foods, which is very crowded, uh, they, they can also be found associated with uh, bacterial community uh, colonizing the, uh, the host, animal host, such as the the current microbiome in which we can uh, highlight Lactobacillus casei, Acidophilus, and Bifidobacteria, which is also a vaginal microbiome, which is a very uh, rich microbiome, a microbiome very rich in Lactobacillus. 
So like uh, lactose is Cristatus, Caceri, and lactose is Inus. But also, uh, this genus is very ubiquitous and can be found in several kinds of uh, environments, such as uh, plants like uh, Lactibotibacillus portalum and Pediococcus species. And they can be also found like uh, in vegetables and uh, organic uh, material in decomposition. And we also have the next generation probiotics, which are basically novel taxa, uh, which has more ecologically strict relationship with the host. So uh, they belong to the so-called uh, hemomicrobiome dark matter, which is the most diversity of the, the, the microbiome, the, the good micro microbiota, in which uh, we can still cultivate them in, in the lab. So for some of them, we, we, science is beginning to isolate and to uncover its properties, such as the Calibacterium Kuznitsi, Duncania, Rosebura, and Archimansia municifila. So uh, thanks to next generation sequencing, and metagenome controls, we can um, identify novel species and try also to understand their metabolic needs so that we can also develop new kind of growth medium and ideal conditions so that they can be cultivated in the lab. And functional foods is another subject that has been also discussed in this uh, symposium and basically they are foods which promote uh, extra nutritional functions so when you eat this, this food they will have uh, effects, beneficial effects in the host uh, physiology okay so as for instance uh, dairy products can be prepared, can be fabricated using non uh, probiotic strain, strains, selecting them, and such as uh, some properties such strains able to um, promote pathogen uh, inhibition, presenting anti inflammatory effects, and able to promote selective microbiota modulation. So the idea, the, the rationale is to um, investigate the, the properties of these functional foods in uh, their, their anti-inflammatory properties in intestinal chronic uh, inflammatory chronic disease, such as IBD. And protogenomics is a term which was coined by this study guy, which is uh, Marco Vettorio, this researcher describes it as a novel genome-based discipline to provide insights into the diversity and evolution of commensal probiotic bacteria and to reveal the molecular basis for the health promoting activities. So it's basically investigating the good, the bad, and the ugly aspects of probiotics. Um, although our research group was not responsible for coining this term, I think we deserve also uh, a spot in the sun because our group, both Brazilian and French group, has been working with genomics approach in probiotic strains long ago. So um, the idea was to uh, create an, um, a special topic in the first journal just to publish this kind of study using property genomics uh, approaches. So basically, we highlight what are the, the, the benefits, the advantages, and the limitations of using this kind of approach. 
rubbish and non approach, okay? So rubbish and can be used to uh, rapidly identify the taxonomy at the species level of the material strains. Also uh, provide insights into the beneficial properties and adaptation and also can be used to assess the risk factors related with violence factors in antibiotic resistance. So basically it's an approach to screen and direct for future studies to conduct uh, research uh, and education by prospection of new uh, probiotic strengths. And if we consider the good, uh, the advantages and the limitations, we can highlight uh, as advantage the fast and massive screening of many, many strains. And also, uh, probogenomics may also allow the, a phylogenetic taxonomic identification at a very accurate resolution. But we also have limitations, like most of the data are very basic biological information and they have a correlation meaning. That means that even if we identify a genes which are probably uh, involved in protective mechanism, it doesn't mean it is, they are responsible for the protective properties of this bacteria. Okay? So, usually we have to integrate uh, bioinformatic analysis and genomic analysis with web lab research so that you can confirm this kind of data. And another limitation is that uh, most databases and bioinformatic tools that have been developed so far are focused in pathogenic bacteria. So we need uh, developers, bioinformaticians, to create new tools focused in uh, probiotic and protective mechanisms database. Okay, so now uh, I will move to uh, the works uh, our team has been conducting. So one of these subjects concerns vaginal lactobacilli bioprospection. This study actually started here with Professor Vasco and we uh, I'll give them a brief explanation about the, the vaginal microbiome. This work uh, previous conducted by uh, Havel and colleagues uh, described that there, there are uh, five uh, C, uh, COVID, uh, state types in the vaginal microbiome. And in each CST, in each state type, you have uh, domination, a, a more abundant lactobacillus taxa. Okay? So, for example, uh, CST type 2 is enriched in lactobacillus aceri. Uh, group 3 is enriched in lactobacillus inners. And uh, group 1 is uh, composed mainly by crispatos. And we have also another group here, which is group 4, which is more equally, uh, evenly distributed there ecologically speaking. So you have a lot of taxa here, and none, of, none of them are dominant. So this kind of uh, vaginal microbiome is more susceptible to polymicrobial infections, such as bacterial vaginosis. So it's believed that uh, a healthy vaginal microbiome is composed most, mostly uh, colonized by lactobacillus. So it's um, suggested that these lactobacillus, they have a protective mechanism that inhibit um, opportunistic bacteria. 
So based in this, uh, we have uh, characterized the genes which were possibly involved in protected methods in uh, six uh, lactobacillus cuspatus. They were the, the first Brazilian isolates isolated from healthy women here in Brazil. And in the Federal University of Bahia, I am continuing this study, but I'm focusing in another CST, which is dominated by uh, Lactobacillus gasseri, and which is, is very unexplored in terms of their role, their protective role in the, the, the vaginal uh, homostasis. So, uh, so basically, this uh, study is being mostly uh, developed by my twins, uh, undergrad students. So I never met them in real life, just online. So I think they are computer drugs, like the, the twins from Matrix. And it's interesting because here we have, when we, we perform taxonomic identification, we could find these species into two clades. So we have actually two uh, sister taxons. We have Gasseri and Paragasseri species. So A and I analysis, which is average nucleotide identity, uh, suggests that uh, four strains of uh, those lactobacilli belongs to Paragasseri, while two of these strains belongs to Gasseri. And we also confirmed this uh, analysis by performing uh, phylogenomics analysis using uh, course F gene of 92 uh, orthologous genes. So this is a concatenated tree. And we clearly can see two plates also, uh, the alignment was performed against uh, both Gasseri and Paragasseri genomes uh, obtained from the GeneBank uh, database. So here we can see that uh, it confirms that our strains here in red, they, four of them belong to Paragasseri and two of them belongs to uh, Gasseri species. And it was interesting also because a lot of species that were submitted in NCBI gene bank as uh, Gasseri, uh, here in this analysis, we suggest they are actually part of Gasseri. So um, we try to compare. Paragasseri species, like the strains with uh, Gasseri strains in terms of probiotic features. So we try to find bacteria encoding uh, genes, and we found that most of the Paragasseri genomes were more enriched in antimicrobial peptides when compared to. Uh, Lactobacillus gasseri strains. So it somehow suggests that at least our isolates, our strains, the Paragasseri strain, have more uh, probiotic uh, potential than the, the gasseri ones. So we also perform uh, genomic island predictions, and we can see here in yellow uh, metabolic islands and in red even I can read this <laughs> but it's uh, pathogenic islands and uh, antibiotic resistance islands so um, paragasari here this range belonging to, to Paragasseri only have uh, metabolic islands, 
while the rest of the strings also uh, presented uh, virulence factors and uh, antibiotic resistance. So since they are present in regions of genome plasticity, it's possible that they present some risk of uh, antibiotic gene mobilization to other bacteria. So they could be dangerous if we ingest them. They could be they could pass transfer uh, resistant genes to our microbiota. But one of them didn't have uh, any uh, virulence factor, neither uh, antibiotic resistant genes, which was lactosin uh, spagaceri CR. I-16, uh, okay? And regarding the metabolic items we identified in this strain, there we found some uh, genes coding for enzymes, which possibly can be involved in starch, glycogen, as a carbon source. So this is very uh, interesting because uh, they're very adapted to the vaginal environment, which in which we have glycogen secretion. So this is another uh, study which is being um, conducted. And this uh, master student, Tyler, she's performing all the in silico analysis. So from here, we isolate first uh, 20 uh, Lactobacilli species from several kinds of habitats such as vegetables, uh, animals, uh, feces, infant feces, and most of them were from plant. Okay, so we performed uh, taxonomic identification, and from the, the 20, we got uh, 10 which were Lactobacillus plantarum, but uh, the sequencing was not good enough of four of them, so we, re we started this work with six strengths, and now uh, Vasco isolated another uh, ten <coughs> strengths, so in total we have now uh, comparative, a genomic comparative studies using 16 isolates of Lactobacillus plantarum, Genomes. So here we uh, confirm all of them are in fact lactobacillus uh, plantarum. And we also identify here um, genes coding for lactobacillus proteins in, in, the, in their genomes. And also uh, in parallel. In UFMG, Professor Vasco was supervising uh, Lucas. Now he's concluded already his dissertation, he's a master. And uh, Lucas performed some uh, experimentation in vitro and in vivo using uh, 10 lactobacillus total. And we found that. Uh, one of the strains have uh, presented several promising results, so which was LPL4. So here is uh, antagonism assays performed in vitro against several kinds of pathogens. So we, we can see here an inhibition uh, halo and against uh, uh, Chigarosone and also. Salmonella tifimuri, Salmonella tifi, E. coli, Enterococcus fecalis. So, based on these in vitro results, we decided to uh, test in in vivo experimentation models of uh, Salmonella tifimuri infection. And here we can observe that LPL4 and LPL9 was the most promising. Uh, 
strays in uh, survival analysis. So now uh, I will move to another study, which is my thesis, which is being supervised by Professor Pasco. And this is uh, a continuation of another previous study, which is being uh, conducted in uh, collaboration with the French Institute with Professor uh, Dr. Wenayao Chan. Okay, so. Basically, in this previous study, we investigated the therapeutic effect of two kinds of functional cheese, the emmental cheese. So what was uh, fermented, prepared with propylpatine from the high sheet, strain, and the other cheese was, we used three um, strains, two three probiotic strains, for the fermentation of this cheese, which were the, the same uh, probiotic, uh, probionic bacteria, Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus delbrucki. So in that previous study, we conclude that both cheeses presented anti-inflammatory uh, effects in colitis uh, model in mice. And the aims of this study of my thesis concerns the evaluation of the effects of these both cheeses in gut microbial function and composition, and both in health context, in homeostasis context, and also in inflammation context. So basically, we used um, a preventive protocol in which mice uh, were treated with either uh, both kind of cheeses or the non-fermented matrix used for the, the cheese fabrication, and uh, mice were uh, administered with this kind of treatments during five days, and uh, in the fifth day. From the fifth day, we induce the colitis using the DSS solution in, in water, and mice will euthanize in the uh, day 12. So, uh, mice, um, we had this group, this cluster of groups which are healthy animals and Inflamed animals which receive either single the single strain cheese with the propionic bacteria or the emmental cheese which contains um, the three um, probiotic strains. Okay, so basically in the day 12 we collect the, the column of the animals and the stools. And then we perform DNA isolation, isolation, and use this uh, genetic material to construct a shotgun metagenomic library. And this library was sequenced in the Luna platform in, in uh, University of Rotterdam with our um, colleague, Dr. Bertrand Brennick. And it was generated around five gigabases per sample, which uh, corresponds to 30,000 reads per sample. So basically, this was this is the, the bioinformatics pipeline I'm using in my thesis. So taxonomic identification is being performed by using the raw reads on the the, the library, and after quality control, this is being aligned against uh, NCBI database, and then the groups are being compared statistically. And for the, the functional profile, we have we are using uh, two approaches. One is annotation of assembled context 
and uh, performing enrichment analysis in CAG uh, pathway annotation, CAG database for uh, pathway annotation, and this also being uh, compared statistically among the, the different treatments. And the, the other approach is uh, an individual analysis in which we select some representative samples and then we try to assemble complete genomes using the metagenomic data sets. Okay? And for this, we call from now on in this presentation as, as MAX. So we, from the, the max we obtained in this study, we performed phylogenomic analysis to identify uh, the species, and also we performed uh, enrichment analysis uh, using uh, care database and pathway, metabolic pathway reconstruction. So now I will show the, the results that we obtained so far in the healthy mice, the homeostasis context. So we performed a PCA analysis, which showed that mice receiving the matrix, the non prevented matrix, or both cheeses, doesn't show difference. So at, at a global level, so the, the microbiome structure is very similar among these groups, depending on the, the kind of treatment they receive. So this is good because if we're giving the cheese to healthy animals, we don't want them to have functional changes. But when we analyze specific pathways, some of them have significant changes, so we observed that mice treated with a mental cheese show an increase in number of genes involved in tryptophan metabolism. And we also correlate this with an increase of uh, archaeomancia in this group treated with uh, a mental cheese. So we can see here that uh, it was a very uh, huge increase because our commercial level is usually around 60%, and here we observe 60% in some of the samples. So our commercial is uh, considered next generation probiotics, and is also uh, a mucine degrading scavenging bacteria. So. It has a very important role because it uh, occupies a very important niche by using mucin proteins, mucus proteins, as uh, a carbon source and also can produce other kind of metabolites such as acetate and uh, other short chain fatty acids which have um, anti inflammatory properties. It can also be used by other bacteria from the, the gut microbiome. So we wanted to investigate which were the, the main species which were contributing to the tryptophan metabolism and also other specific pathways. So to do that, we performed a feeding strategy. So we select one of the sample which were very enriched in archaeomancial reads and use it for assembling the, the genome of this, this strain. So basically, this work is we have a pool with uh, all the bacteria species reached all together, and with feeding uh, pipeline, we can uh, separate in different taxonomic groups this. Uh, assembled context. So we have obtained three uh, beans, which means three folders in each contained uh, Archaeomancia alistips and Bacteriodalis uh, order reads. Okay, so as you were interested, 
in investigating which species uh, was the, was this one. We performed a phylogenomic analysis and we confirmed that this uh, uh, context belong to Archaeomancia pusidifila species. So this is a heat map which represents the contribution of each map we obtained in the, this group, this sample, which were treated with uh, the mental cheese. And we can see here uh, the amount of genes found in each category pathway. So we can see here that Archaeomancia mucinifila was the main contributor because the pathway of tryptophan metabolism is very enriched compared to the others uh, max we obtain. And also, we can see that other possible uh, compounds with um, neuromodulators activity is also enriched in this uh, map, such as uh, GABA production. So basically, uh, digging up the Akemansa the, Musinifila the pathways, we can see that it contains several enzymes responsible for uh, degrading sulfide compounds, which is present in the sulfide bonds found in the mucus protein. And here, it suggests that it also has enzymes able to convert this into acetate. And regarding tryptophan uh, metabolism, it had, uh, the bacteria has enzymes which could be able to convert tryptophan into indole, which has uh, also could work with uh, neuromodulator in, our, in the host in the gut brain axis. So uh, we also found uh, the GAD system, which is our enzymes which can convert glutamate into amino uh, uh, gamma amino acids, GABA, which also has been described in the literature as a neuromodulator. And uh, now I will show the functional profile we have obtained in the inflammation context. So these mice, we, they present a uh, very different microbiome composition regarding function because uh, here we can see all, all the mice that receive DSS solution while mice treated either with uh, emmental or single strain uh, genes is very different when compared to DSS group. So we wanted to investigate which kind of metabolism pathway was being uh, affected in, among these groups. So when we compare the naive group and the DSS, we can see that several primary metabolism functions is more or in number of genes when compared to the naive group. So it suggests that DSS and colitis reduce the metabolic potential of the gut microbiome. And when we compare DSS group with uh, the, the non-fermented matrix, they are very similar. So there is no much difference. So the matrix itself, which our study suggests that it does not restore the metabolic functions. While here, when we compare the, the DSS and the, the, the single strain genes, we can see already some uh, improvements which were uh, significant 
here. And also, when we compare the, the DSS and the, the group of mice treated with the, the amino cheese containing the tree, uh, probiotic gene, uh, gene uh, strength, we can see that uh, an enrichment of lactobacillus genus here in the elemental treated mice, the elemental treated mice compared to the DSS uh, group, okay, and also in uh, some metabolic functions, we see an enrichment of uh, this pathways compared to the DSS group. And uh, so here we try to perform the same strategy we perform for uh, picking up a cancer goal in the, in, in the microbial community regarding the metabolic functions. So uh, we selected one sample that was very enriched in lactobacillus and performed uh, phylogenomic analysis. And in this case, we also use as an outgroup the lactobacillus delbruchi, which we use for the cheese modification in order to, to investigate if this enrichment was caused by the, the bacteria that was present in the cheese. And as we can see here, it's a totally different, it's very, it's very distant from the strain we use in the cheese. So we suggest that the cheese has modulated the increase of um, a new uh, taxa here of lactobacillus and our fellow phylogenetic tree suggests that this species belongs to little lactobacillus murinus. So uh, we perform the same constitution analysis we, we use for the health mice and here we can see that little lactobacillus uh, Morinus is one of the main which produces in several uh, functions, in several metabolic functions, such as starch and sucrose uh, metabolism. We also see enrichment in vitamin metabolism and also uh, some functions related with bacterial adaptation, such as secretion system and ABC. Uh, transported when compared to, to, uh, to the other mags we obtain in the uh, inflamed mice. And another question we had was if these uh, strains we use for the cheese fabrication, if they had uh, antibiotic resistance genes, if they could transfer these genes to the mice microbiota. So our data suggests that uh, the only um, antibiotic resistance genes present in the genomes of the isolates we use for the cheese fabrication, only propane bacteria uh, for the hygiene presented two genes which confers uh, resistance to tetracycline. And when we compare to the metagenome samples, both healthy health or uh, inflamed mice with colitis, none of them presented tetracycline resistance. So uh, this suggests that at least in this context, this cheese might be safe. So basically our take home message are regarding the lactobacilli strain biodispatching study is that vaginal uh, Lactobacillus paragaceri presents potential probiotic properties and uh, Lactobacillus plantum LPL4 have inhibitory properties against salmonella. And regarding the, the metagenomic of study using the, the functional cheese, we can state that both probiotic cheese restore good micro microbiota and metabolic functions and Probiotic genes seem to be safe regarding all drug resistance, uh, horizontal uh, transfer to the gut microbiota of mice. 
So I'd like to thank everybody and also the, the funding agencies which supported this uh, work. Thank you. Yeah, this is a good, good, a good idea. And just to comment concerning the Zendor derivatives, they are not only important in the brain axis, because as we know uh, in our lab, I, I showed this, that the tryptophan metabolism and the production of Zendor derivatives are quite important in, in vibration. In yes, I saw, I saw it in your presentation. <laughs> Yes, I, I understand this, uh, your uh, statement, but I, I didn't uh, 
consider this because in our, our Fleming mice we didn't see uh, an enrichment of tryptophan. Okay. Just in the healthy mice. Okay. So that, that's why I, I didn't try to yes to correlate this with anti-formation anti-formatory properties. Okay, now our last event of the day will be a round table. Just to explain how it's going to work, all the presentations will be given sequentially and all the questions will be answered at the end with all the speakers composing the table, okay? So for the first presentation, I'd like to invite the good dog from the Cellular and Molecular Genetics Laboratory, Dr. Luis Lima. Probiogenomics 
constitute the genomic scale analysis of the health of human microorganisms. Uh, this analysis included main, the main action mechanism of these strains to promote the health benefit to the group. Uh, included the animal modulation focus of this presentation. So, uh, using this approach, this progression of this approach, uh, our results go to identify the proteins related to the main probiotic features of silicon G3, including heat stress survival, antibacterial activity, bioactive metabolic production, and immunomodulation, in which uh, we demonstrated that there are uh, some proteins of silicon G3 able to interact with the human immune proteins, I quote, and the nuclear effect of capability in that effect. Um, Seabird proteins of silicon G3 highlighting red um, were identified as uh, interacting with the human proteins uh, in unconvenient capacity in highlighting blue. Interesting that the human proteins, uh, the NSKB1 were the most interactive proteins. All proteins in silicon G3 able to interact with the human proteins. Um, when it comes to cadmium as surface disposable proteins. In this read, of, in this context, uh, the protein, the same protein, PRTB, uh, appears to be a strong candidate responsible for, for the anti inflammatory property of the silicon. Um, these results cooperate with the Master the master results of Viviani Batista, in which we demonstrated that after it has been inactivated by the by heat inactivated, silicon G3 is able to immunomodulate animals inflamed with five fuel chemotherapy. And this result is associated with the regulation of factors associated with the NSF capacity in activator. Uh, such as to like receptor 2 and yet number 1 in reduction of pro-inflammatory markers uh, such as I 12 I 17 CNA and enhance the, the gene expression of the immunohypatory I think so so the results we say the provision of the approach suggests that immunomodulatory effects of silicon G3 are the main derived from the surface Exposed proteins. To identify uh, if the surface exposed proteins of silicon G3 uh, are responsible for the drive uh, the seed common G3 host interaction, uh, the extractable seed common G3 surface proteins were, were extracted with one of the methods, and it was evaluated in an inflammation model of OI. Uh, our results show that uh, the consumption of these surface proteins is able to ameliorate the disease activity index of the animals, ameliorate the intestinal bacterial architecture when compared with the immune implemented one with the SCS. Uh, this ameliorated effects associated with the reduction of pro inflammatory markers with uh, interferon gamma, cytokine, and uh, the activity of the in respective enzymes of neutrophils and neutrophils in the brain, and thus ameliorating the histopathological score. Um, based on these results, um, we conclude that anti inflammatory effects of the silicon G3 is mediated by its surface layer associated proteins. Uh, it's very interesting uh, to highlight that uh, besides to evaluate, to identify the genetic factors associated with beneficial effects of probiotics, the proper genomic is also used um, to identify genetic factors associated with the safe concerns of new, new probiotic candidates. Um, so, this approach. Um, uh, it is used to analyze the, uh, the, the identification of genetic factors associated with the probiotic codes, emolgence and degradation, 
um, production of uh, particle compounds with biogenic amines uh, is also used to identify the genetic effects associated with virulence and antimicrobial resistance. Uh, besides, uh, the progenomics approach is used to identify the genetic mobile elements uh, able to disseminate it, uh, the genetic effects, also virulence, also antimicrobial resistance. Uh, based on this information, some based in uh, guidelines of regulatory agents international and national, uh, we would like to know if the stage two and three strain present are safe to label to be used in probiotic applications. Uh, in this work, published by our research group, we evaluated the safety of stage two and three uh, based on some parameters like antimicrobial susceptibility. Hemolysemia with interrogation activity, the identification of various factors, and an individual model of pathogenesis. An individual model of pathogenesis. Um, the main concern in regard to the safety of the probiotics is the antimicrobial, antimicrobial resistance. And two pentamic biogram, as said, we demonstrate that C common to three has resistance to amino dysmotides in common time, spectrum If this phenotype is related to the some factors associated to drug transmembrane transport. Um, so, however, it's also very important to highlight that these genetic factors um, not were identified in plant they find the, in this way. So, based on this information, we believe that CISCA, that no um, ability to disseminate these genetic factors to older strains. Um, at phenotypical level, it was also observed that C is common to three, has no ability to cause hemolytic and mucolytic degradation and mucolytic activity. However, in the genome of this strain, uh, we identify some genes associated with this process. Uh, but uh, this, none of these elements were associated or inserted in plasma of the tree. Um, more practical evaluation of the safety of new probiotic candidates. Uh, so, I believe through the in vivo models of pathogenesis. In this case, we evaluate if the seed from entry consumption uh, for 13 days could cause any alteration in health. Our results show that consumption of this strain no cause alteration in clinical parameters, uh, such as food intake, liver weight loss, or on that. In addition, it was observed no bacterial relocation after cystic consumption, no alteration in the material architecture, uh, such as or, uh, inflammatory cells uh, like embryo and embryo. In this case, all these analysis demonstrate that C123 has a lay of stage for using integral probability applications. Uh, in this case, in conclusion, um, our result proved that uh, probationomics approach is a sensor tool for identifying genetic factors association with the beneficial effects of new candidates of probability, the safety aspects for consumption of this strain. Being an essential approach that can facilitate individual or personalized use of the probiotics for clinical application. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ruiz. Now we would like to invite Dr. Maria Lilia Andrade. She has a master's and a PhD in food sciences from the Federal University of Minas Gerais. Really result and the, I will present this 
Application of photoliposaccharides and arginine improves the level of mucosy and modulates the intestinal microbiome. Intestinal mucosis is, is an important side effect of chemotherapy or radiotherapy. And the, it is defined as inflammatory and ulcerative lesions along of the gastrointestinal tract that led to the imbalance of the intestinal microbiome. Besides this, the cytotoxic effects of drugs such as 5-FU in the gastrointestinal tract can lead to the worsening of nutritional status and the quality of life. In this way, effective therapeutic strategy to prevent and treat of mucosite are crucially needed. To best of our knowledge, there isn't in the clinical practice any producer to control this inflammation. In the sense, and based on the review results of our research group, we associate two immunomodulators. A FOS, an immunomodulator of intestinal microbiota, and arginine, an aminoacid with anti-inflammatory action, in order to improve the beneficial effects. Balbicimides were divided into five groups. In the control group CL, mucosite was not induced. In the MUC group, mucosite was induced. In the MUC FOS group, mucosite was induced and supplementation with FOS. In the MUC ARG group, mucosite was induced and supplementation with ARG. In the MUC FOS ARG group, mucosite was induced and supplementation with arginine and FOS. Mais were uh, supplemented by gathered for 10 days and on the second day, mucosite was induced. Our results showed that treatment with arginine and the association of FOS and the arginine were better to improve tissue damage and histological score. In the morphometric analysis, supplementation with arginine and association of FOS and the arginine improve virus head and crypto death. Uh, in addition, it was found that all treatments reduce the intestinal permeability and improve intestinal length, show the preservation of the intestinal architecture. In the blood cell analysis, sorry. in the analysis of blood cells, the supplementation with arginine and the association of FOS and the arginine was able to increase the numbers of globed cells. It's very important because the cells are responsible for mood secretion. Immunohistoclinic analysis showed that all treatments improved the numbers of proliferative cells. It's very important because the increase in proliferative cells uh, is one of those responsible for promoting the of intestinal damage. In the evaluation of oxidative stress, the results showed an increased lipid peroxidation by t and a reduction of soil activity in the MOOC group. On the other hand, the treatment using the association of FOS and arginine to, was able to reduce the T-bars and increase the soil activity, resulting in a protective effect on the intestinal epithelium. We suggest that the oxidative stress reduction and increased cell proliferation in the production 
Hepta de reduce intestinal permeability. In the intestinal microbiota analysis, MOOC group increases the abundance of foods and decreases the abundance of bacteroides. The association of FOS and arginine was able to prevent this alteration. It is important because the association of FOS and arginine was able to prevent the imbalance in the intestinal microbiota caused by 5-FU. In addition, animals of MOOC group show decreased in the abundance of bacterioids and lactobacillus, as well as in the production of acetate and propionate. In contrast, the association of FOS and arginine was able to revert these alterations. The results are important because the chambers and the fat acids are important in the regulation of inflammation. It is important to highlight that bacterioids is related to increased production of propionate and the expression of GR41. This receptor has an important role in us. It may mediate the interaction between human host and the gut microbiome, controlling the inflammation process. We also observed an increase of the genus voucher and the anaerobic plasma in the MOOC FOS group. In parallel, the administration of FOS promoted an increase in acetate production and GPR-43 infection. The bind of GPR-43 uh, in the intestinal environment promotes anti-inflammatory effects and modulates the expression of immunoregulatory genes, such as NF-kappa-B. Besides this, the microbi microbiota of animals of all treatments showed increased the abundance of anaerobic genes. Anaerobic genes may have contributed to modulation of GPI-109. This receptor has an important role. It may modulate dendritic cells maturation and function. The data observed in the present work showed that the association between FOS and arginine was able to improve the beneficial effects of these immunomodulators on the intestinal mucosa. The FOS and the arginine was able to reduce weight loss, intestinal permeability, oxidative stress, and the histological score. It was increased global cells. GPI uh, expression in the short chain fat acids and modulate the intestinal microbiome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mulder. Now we invite a PhD student in genetics from the UFMG, Monique Amelie. And what I'm going to present to you today is, is, is the work that I've developed during my master's degree entitled Growth Differ Differentiation Factor 11, delivered by Lactococcus lactis trains, modulates inflammation and prevents causal damage in a mice model of intestinal mucositis. 
His work was supervised by Professor Vasco Montero and Professor Rodriguez. So, so I divided my presentation into a brief introduction uh, following the hypothesis, the material and methods that we used to achieve that uh, objective, some results, and some conclusions. So, as we have been discussing all week, lactic acid bacteria are a widely, widely used group. They are a heterogeneous group of gram positive bacteria that can convert sugar into lactic, act, uh, lactic acid during fermentation. And many of them uh, have the gener generally recognized as safe status for consumption. Uh, and they, many of them are used in the dairy industry as a functional foods, as we have seen, and the pharmaceutical industry as medicine. Uh, we also can explore the uh, lactic gas bacteria as potential treatment for uh, conditions affecting the gastrointestinal tract. And inside this one, we have the molar organism, which is called Lactococcus lactis. So the thing about lactic acid bacteria is that they can be genetically engineered. So we have developed uh, several tools for the genetic modification of several strains, mainly lactococcus lactis because it is the model organism. And we can engineer those uh, strains to be uh, cell factories that produce uh, recombinant strains of our desired interest. And uh, we can also use them as delivery vehicles of, of such a, a eukaryotic expression vectors, uh, historically known as DNA vaccines or gene therapy. So we can engineer those strains of lactic acid bacteria to produce enzymes or anti inflammatory proteins or antigens. And they, and uh, lactic acid bacteria, recombinant like lactic acid bacteria, have been an alternative treatment for the treatment of intestinal bowel diseases. As several works have uh, demonstrated that through the years on, uh, several models, not only uh, intestinal bowel diseases models, uh, as some works show that they ameliorate the disease or the disease severity and can uh, reduce the inflammation, uh, as we have seen in several works, uh, several studies that have been reported, and a few of the authors are sitting here. And so we have uh, experimental colitis, useful colitis, and uh, intestinal mucositis. So as my colleagues before we have already commented, but mucositis is a side effect of chemotherapy treatment with the use of drugs such as 5-fluorocrosyl or 5-FU which is an uracil analog that can block the synthesis of acid and nucleic acids through several pathways and causes in a specific apop apoptosis of cells, uh, both malignant and healthy cells. And that uh, about 50 to 80 percent of patients experience mucositis that can manifest in the form of intestinal mucositis or oral mucositis. So, uh, mucositis is an, active, is an acute inflammatory process in which we have the uh, liber liberation of several reactive oxygen species that cause uh, damage to the tissue, and we have that response to the primary damage that leads to the activation of the nf kappa B pathway, which is the main uh, inflammatory pathway in which we will have the secretion of several pro-inflammatory cytokines that will cause uh, damage to the tissue that will uh, destroy the entire intestinal architecture. And we can also have a, a colonization because of that uh, inflammatory response by opportunistic pathogens or opportunistic bacteria. And then we have the more activation of this inflammatory process, mainly associated by the NF-kappa B pathway. So uh, an alternative treatment could uh, of, uh, aim at blocking or at least attenuating this uh, pathway. With that in mind, we have the growth differentiation factor 11, which is a, a protein involved in embryogenesis of uh, vertebrates that only recently has begun to be elucidated as having an anti inflammatory potential, as a few works have described a GDF11 capable of blocking. 
or inhibiting the nf kappa B pathway and thus decreasing the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And several uh, GDF11 has been tested on several diseases models, such as inflammatory arthritis, psoriasis, is like skin inflammation, and a work describing another amelioration of experimental trials, which caught which caught our attention. And thus led us to hypothesize: Is GDF11 delivered as a gene therapy? By lactococcus lactis, capable of attenuating intestinal mucositis induced by fiber U. And in order to do that, we constructed uh, our DNA vaccine, our gene therapy, which is uh, through molecular cloning, which we clone the sequence, the marine sequence of GDF11, into uh, the plasmid that developed, developed by our group. It's called Pishu plasmid. And we transformed into two strains of lactococcus lactis, NG1363 and NC2118. And we administered it to mice, Jamaica Vaj, daily during 13 days. Uh, and on the 10th day, we induced mucitis with an intraperitoneal injection of 5FU. And 72 hours later, we euthanized the animals to apply for helium for analysis. Now, some results. We have observed that, uh, as you can see the negative group, we have a preservation of the intestinal architecture, no presence of uh, inflammatory infiltrate, and in this group, we see some loss of the intestinal architecture and the presence of inflammatory infiltrate. And, when, and then we apply uh, histopathological score to assess the disease severity, and we have seen some effects. In Attenuating effect caused by the group that received NCD2118 carrying our PSU GDF11, our gene therapy. And those results uh, were corroborated when we assessed the activity of enzyme MPO, which is a marker of neutrophils infiltrated on the tissue. We have seen also that NCD group PSU GDF11 uh, also decreased levels of neutrophil infiltration. And then we observe the goblet cell de degeneration that also occurs in mucositis, and up here red arrows point at the integrated goblet cells. And we have seen that the groups, both groups that received lactobox lactis strain carrying the GDF11, uh, showed some goblet cells preservation. So uh, our results suggested that there has been a terrible therapeutic role in vivo caused by uh, the administration of lactobox lactis carrying patient GDF11. Moreover, we wanted to assess the inflammatory uh, gene expression of levels, and we have seen that uh, we uh, observed some uh, attenuation of two inflammatory genes on both groups that received uh, lactobox lactis strain, patient GDF11, the NL3. In our P3 and the NF kappa P1 uh, in, uh, genes, uh, both of them are highly expressed in, in mucitis. One is the main major uh, transcription factor for pro inflammatory cytokines, and the other is involved in the formation of the inflammatory complex. Um, we also have seen some reduction levels of uh, TNF on the group that received NCDO2118, the SHU GDF11, and we have seen an increase in IL-10 expression on both groups that receive uh, the lactococcus lactis strain, especially the DF11. And IL-10 is the major anti-inflammatory uh, cytokine. So these results also corroborate with the literature results already described that exogenous GDF11 decreases levels of pro-inflammatory genes in vitro. And so we can conclude that uh, oral administration of, of lactococcus lactis strain and CDO2118, patient GDF11, had an attenuating effect on intestinal mucositis, and thus GDF11 has a promising anti inflammatory uh, activity to be explored, and then that recombinant lactic acid bacteria can be promising or promising. Uh, Treatment uh, alternative for intestinal mucositis induced by 5 of you. 
So I would like to thank the funding agencies, both my supervisors and uh, my group of research, and to everyone here watching. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Monique. Now we would like to invite a first dog from the Cellular and Molecular Genetics Laboratory of UFG, Dr. Juliana Lago. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Juliana Laguna. I'm postdoc in the Vasco de Vegas lab. And today I will be presenting uh, my experiment is about the P the P62 protein gene therapy modulates inflammation and would in model of DSS induced uh, ulcerative colitis. One bred uh, vivid in the introduction, the inflammatory bowel uh, disease can affect the gastrointestinal tract of the other microbiota and also can be uh, affected by the genetic environment with microbial factors. Uh, two, oops, sorry. <laughs> two of this uh, inflammatory disease is the Crohn disease and ulcerative colitis, which one I will be talking here uh, today. So the uh, the treatments to the ulcerative colitis would be the five amino salicylic acid is the more common. Also, the immunomodulators are corticoids, and in several cases, uh, can lead to colonoscopy surgery. But another alternative that you can use is the probiotics, like my colleague is going here for the uh, in the whole day. So the probiotic can uh, modulate the microbiota and the immune system. Also, has uh, anti-inflammatory actions. Uh, can increase the short chain fatty acid and their mousse production. Also, it needs uh, the proliferation of the pathogenous bacteria and action the Thai fusions uh, intestinal barrier. Uh, the lactococcus lax is one a probiotic that belongs to the lactic acid groups, and we research a lot in our lab, uh, which I talked about. And there's uh, many uh, publications that report the anti inflammatory effect and the, uh, the effects on this in the uh, to attenuate the ulcerative colit. But also, in our, in our lab, we are searching about some proteins like the B62 uh, is a long receptor uh, that we can find a different kind of cells and has a um, function to, uh, to control the proliferation, cell survival, apoptosis, and also one immune response. Uh, uh, the, the structure of the B62 has uh, 10, around 10 mutative viral sites. Uh, today, I want to highlight the autophagy and I will explain better uh, when I show my results. But uh, the B62 can uh, interfere in different parts of the metabolism, like uh, insulin signing, adipogenesis, the inflammation as well, and the mTOR and others. Um, in the literature, what they are saying about the B62, there are different kinds of models, especially for uh, the B62 in cancer, like in colon cancer, but not just colon, but also lungs and breast cancer. And what they say is um, this, the book, especially the book, but there are, there are others. Uh, when they, they increase uh, the, uh, the expression, the gene expression of the B62 and the also, the protein expression inside the cells, it's because uh, the cells have, have some damage, of course, because it's a cancer cells. And they can see different uh, when the, the cells are in metastasis and also when they are in the cancer beginning. So, uh, both uh, show different uh, uh, pathways that they can interfere, but the, the more important they direct is about the autophagy. So this other paper, uh, they, they, this paper don't, uh, doesn't say anything about the B62, but 
They uh, talk about the uh, simulating of the ontology, prevent the intentional false information, and I'm a military police. So because of that, I, I brought the, the three of this, but um, I didn't find or I couldn't find an experiment with the P62 and the polyculturative, but we can find uh, in outside models. And so the, because of those, all of those findings, the objective of my experiment was to investigate the therapeutic effect of the recombinant bacterial lactofox labs and CTO 2118 tissue, P62, in marine model DSS induced ulcerative culture. So for that, now the bacteria was growing 30 degrees Celsius and in 17, uh, supplemented uh, plus 0.5% of glucose, and after the desensification, uh, the pellet was suspended in 200 microliters of the PBS, and my treatments were done. So we divide the treatment into groups. Uh, one known in plain groups that compounds the control, the LNX, tissue entity, and carry the molecule of the P62. And the other group was uh, in plain groups, which all of those uh, received 2% of the uh, DSS. So, yeah, and, and also uh, is the same, like the uh, LNX, tissue entity, or carry the P62, but uh, was uh, DSS. So for that, my, the treatments were feed the mice in the day first to build into the day five. And afterwards, uh, we wait for 10 days, like the cognition days, and then seven days of the GSS inductions, and the eutanasia happened in day 22. So during the whole experiment, the food and liquid consumption was analyzed, and uh, in the Eltona, the blood was collected and uh, the permeability was measured. And uh, also the column tissue was collected and uh, the column length was measured and then the, the, the tissue was broke and some analysis was worked on afterwards. So as a result, uh, in that experiment, we didn't see any different in relation to the food Intake or the liquid consumption, as well as uh, we didn't see any difference in relation to the body weight during the DSS induction. But uh, for the colon, <laughs> because the colon, uh, we could see different. So uh, we saw one in a short term in the both uh, inflated groups, and when we feed the mice with the lactococcus lights carrying the P62. We see we saw an improvement uh, for the permeability were the same. So we, uh, the like two inflamed groups carrying or not uh, the P62 was um, better than the inflamed group. And uh, uh, in relation to the uh, relative gene expression of the P2. Uh, what we can saw was uh, my both inflamed carrying on of the P62 had more uh, gene expression for the P2. And here you can see all my, uh, my treatments, my controls, and here my claim groups, and also there are the two treatments of uh, rebound and with the P62. And uh, you can see one improvement in relation to the global uh, goblet cells, the number of the global cells. So, like I'm showing here in the figure, so uh, the the P62 improved uh, the cells, the global cells. So, because of that, we conclude that P62 molecule increased the uh, the move to gene expression and the number of the global cells in the inflammation achieved so, uh, in relation to the, the cryptic death, this, uh, we, we saw one improvement as well, and no different when we compare with non inflamed groups. Uh, they have more in, in the both uh, treatments. And here is the same like the, the other ones. So, here is my control, all of my control, and here is my uh, inflamed group, which you can see. Uh, on, 
uh, damage in the mucosa and also more infiltration of the cells. And then you also you can see more improvement when uh, they in the mice were treated uh, treated with uh, with or without the, the, the disposition. So the histological uh, score was lower in the both uh, treatments compared to the explain, but was higher in the current in relation to the control groups. So for that, uh, we conclude the T62 increase the uh, treated D and reduce the histological uh, score in the explain assertive for each in relation to the um, yellow peroxidase activity, what we can solve one tendency of the decrease in, in, the treatment, in my treatment with uh, the recombinant bacteria and carrying the D62 compared with the, uh, the flames groups and yeah, is there an activity? So, and also uh, for the pro inflammatory system. Cytokines, what we can uh, observe was uh, the EL17A uh, relative gene expression was higher. We didn't see, uh, we, we saw different in relation to all the groups, but we didn't see any different in relation to my treatments here the inflamed. But for the NF relative gene expression, we saw one depression of. Uh, when the, the mice were supplemented with recombinant uh, bacteria carrying this. So, for my uh, findings, uh, we didn't saw any different relation between soil and food or body weight, but we saw one improvement in the, the color lane, uh, the more the moderated permeability, also increased the number of the group of cells and the gene expression. In, uh, increase the script D and decrease the histological score, decrease tendency, the uh, peroxidase activity, also increase uh, the EL17A and uh, I decrease the TMS of the relative gene expression. When I, uh, I, I, I began my, my presentation, I told for all of you that I will explain why I will explain later about the autophagy. So my experiment uh, was just for uh, see if the B62 could ameliorate the conservative quality. But we suggest that maybe could be for the way of the autophagy because in the literature we uh, found a high relationship between the autophagy and genes that indicate inflammatory body disease. These genes, uh, the name is that is a group of genes of the A, T, G genes. <laughs> and when they, uh, there is a high expression of these genes, these are uh, a high uh, indicative that not just for uh, the exerative pollen, but also for Crohn disease. And uh, this is another one, this is the, the other that I showed before. They um, also conclude that uh, the autophagies can be many pathways, but maybe there is one interaction in relation to NF kappa beta and also the N4 because they look like they work together. And also, they say they uh, correlate the autophagy and the complex uh, cells. And because it's like that, the autophagy, can, um, yes, that there's a high correlation. Uh, so, because of uh, my conclusions, well, the B62 per, uh, protein may be a therapeutic alternative to a thermal ideoserative polyp. However, more studies should be done in order to understand the mechanism of the B62 in the ideoserative polyp. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Julian. Now I would like to invite all the speakers to compose the table.
Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the other. I'm ready. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I have a technical question. So, in your model, in your protocol, you have the washing time, the clearance time. You, you start to eat the recombinant yes. yes. bacteria. <laughs> then there is 10 days between one week. Yes. Uh, because our uh, intention was to treat the animals first and then uh, try to stimulate the immune response and wait uh, for 10 days is one model that I uh, use, usually use him and WFG. And then we induce the conservative police for seven days and we can see if, uh, if it, my treatment could be one uh, like a pre prevent the quality. So it's not for treatment but uh, for prevention. Okay. And finish it for me. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I have a, it's, it's more common than a question for a woman. Chikia then is uh, primarily a growth factor, yes? Yes. So do you think it's serious to give that to someone who suffers from cancer? To us, to the five IQ, so we will not alleviate the side effects of five IQ, but do we give a growth factor to someone who already has a, a, a cancer? Um, I, I can't tell much about cancer because. No, I, as I told you, it, it, for me it's more. Uh, uh, I'm surprised. Yeah, but uh, GDF11 is mainly related, is mainly expressed in during embryogenesis and, and it helps orientate the axis of vertebrae. So um, I don't know, I'm sorry, but I don't know that the, the involvement of GDF11 in, in, in cancer, but um, it is involved in, in sarcopenia and many other. Thing. So with cancer, I, I can't. Uh, because just to add a, add a comment on the, on the fixed comment, I think this would be probably very difficult to apply in humans due to this reason. Because in cancer, you have a higher proli and set proliferation, and you will provide a growth factor, you know. So I think I have a cancer, I'm not sure that I will take this. Well, just, just, just one illustration of uh, this type of argument. Uh, we, we, in, in Europe, we have to face some uh, vagrant movement and stuff like that, uh, and people who are against milk. And, and one of the arguments is that even mobile milk contains growth factor, and they say it's unsafe because you drink growth factor when you are an adult. This is made for the baby, so you, you will induce some cancer. It's bullshit. But this is an argument for the anti beer movement. So imagine in, a, in, a, in, a, in this context, which could be even more touchy. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I have a question for Luis. Luis? In fact, you said that you uh, you have extracted the bacterial surface layer proteins and you showed that you have anti-inflammatory effects. And I saw that your publication you have is, your publication is in preparation. What did you plan to do to go further? Because it's not a, a real novel research. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we know that. A lot of probiotic bacteria have their own uh, surface layer protein, which are anti inflammatory. What did you plan to do to go further? Because, in fact, you can go further. Okay, um, well, the first step will be identified uh, by proton kinase who are these proteins, and to do the mutation of the predicted genes involved in the bacteria surface, and then we predict with the responsible for the anti-inflammatory program of the system. But um, I believe that um, even there is the moment there was reason to denote, but um, I think no 
strains of probiotic. The molecular effect is related to anti-inflammatory related to inflammatory effects will be driving for surface proteins. But I, because I think I, I, I could give you a simple suggestion. For example, at this time, a lot of uh, papers have shown that neuropeptides peptide have an anti-inflammatory property. So I think you can do a very, not so simple, but extract the peptidoglycan Try to purify the neural peptide. I can give you the paper when they did this, and I think this way you can go much further with not so complicated uh, strategies. I think so. It's an advice, I don't know. Thank you. To better uh, publish your results. I have a question for Maria Emilia also, because I think that your uh, the, the idea of the combination of post Plus RBD is a very good idea. And my my question was to know I think you have a how far are you from the market to put such a product on the market? Because FOS are already on the market, they are uh, they are present with many prebiotic products. And I was wondering if RGD, the combination FOS plus RGD could be accepted by the regulatory uh, offices in Brazil. I don't know, I have no idea. So <laughs> this is this is my question. I don't know. This is my no, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't ask the question to you, but <laughs> so I don't speak it very well. Okay. It's okay. And please call the Portuguese or Wow, it's a guess to me, isn't it? So you can answer in Portuguese and the password will translate. Okay. That's fine. É, a gente sempre trabalhou né, com a arginina e com fós isoladamente e a gente já teve sempre o né, efeito bons e a gente resolveu fazer essa, essa associação a gente conseguiu fazer efeitos muito bons e fizemos um pedido da patente então a gente tem a patente desse suplemento então, e a gente está em busca de, de alguém para financiar o nosso produto então o objetivo é realmente fazer um produto a princípio, um produto alimentício, não farmacêutico, então um suplemento alimentar. E para isso a gente tem que seguir todas as regras da Anvisa e, e tentar formular. A gente já fez tentou, né? Com várias empresas, então, mas até então sem sucesso. Então, se você quiser entender, talvez você possa colocar no mercado como um suplemento. Isso é tudo? Sim. Não, eu não sou bad em nada. So the idea was the association force uh, and the encouragement. The result was very good. And the potential, potentialized the results. The, the idea is uh, to have a product uh, related to food supplements because the regulatory system in our part of the world is terrible. So we don't use the medicine. Okay. Uh, I need to use the food supplement. And, to, and, uh, and you are the company uh, which will be interested by such product. We have a Brazilian company which is selling food supplements. Yes. We are trying to have a company to 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 give uh, financial support. So I would like to thank all the speakers that composed the round table. And also, thank you very much for your presence. For